Yo there guys, this is Cobb, and this video is going to be more of a general Destruction Warlock PvP guide. In this video I'm going to be covering a clip from Cobrax 16, which is probably my favourite clip of the entire movie personally, which is uh, the huge battle outside of Stormwind City. You'll probably be surprised at how much I trimmed down this clip for the video, it's a lot longer than I came across in the final cut of Cobrax 16. So in this video you're basically going to get to see the full clip uh, completely uncut, and I'm just going to be talking over it, explaining what I was doing at the time and why. Now this is where the clip actually starts, you see the very first thing I do, very very important, always lay a demonic circle, if you don't you're going to pay for it in the future. Even if all of your opponents are casters, which they aren't in this clip, one of them is a retribution paladin, but even if they are all casters, there's no guarantee that a melee class won't join in the fight at a later time in the fight. Now you see I'm just going to spread rain of fires just to destroy all of these low level characters that are scattered around here, I don't want them distracting me in the middle of the fight. And I'm going to start out by targeting the Retribution Paladin instead of the Frost Mage, and this is because I'm using the Succubus pet. The key to winning any 1v2 or 1v3 or even higher, uh, any situation like that, is to bring down your targets as quickly as possible. Now the Succubus is an anti-melee pet, it has a lot of controls that can destroy melee classes. If I was using a Fell Hunter, I probably would have started on the Frost Mage because if I can lock him out in Frost, he'd find himself unable to Ice Block because he'd be locked out of the Frost School. Now remember, I want to take targets down as quickly as possible, so we're going to see this Retribution Paladin uses Fist of Justice on me, which is his only stun. And this is massive because now I know that I can pop my Unending Resolve, use it as an Aura Mastery effect, and basically free cast a Chaos Bolt and have almost no chance of being stopped. So I'm going to Unending Resolve alongside my One Shot Macro, which is my PvP Unused Trinket and Dark Soul Instability. I throw a Havoc out onto the Mage to get the most out of this huge Chaos Bolt and I get it landed. Well, I actually have to Shadow Fury him just to land it because he's running around me like a damn squirrel. Now a massive thing to notice here is that the Mage actually silenced into my Aura Mastery and that's a huge mistake on his part and I need to take advantage of that which I'm going to do as soon as this Retribution Paladin goes down. You see I'm just spamming damage into him, he doesn't want to bubble and he's going to actually go down as a result of that and he's going to use his bubble once he reses back up but that's not till later in the fight. Now it's just me and the mage and my aura mastery is ended but remember he silenced into that aura mastery so what am I going to do? I'm just going to free cast a gigantic chaos bolt into him and it's going to force him to ice block before the damage lands. Now remember, there's always something that you can be doing while a mage is in an ice block or a paladin is in a bubble. You can always spam fell flames into those to keep building your embers even while they're immune to your damage. But something you do against mages is you can banish the water elemental. In this case he cancels the ice block almost immediately so it might not have been the best idea to waste time banishing the elemental but definitely if you've got nothing better to do and you've got an okay amount of embers then banishing the pet is something you can do. Now what I'm looking to do is kill this guy fairly quickly, because I know his deep freeze is going to be back off cooldown fairly soon, as well as his counter spell. But luckily for me, he actually uses his counter spell immediately as when it comes back on cooldown as a blanket silence. So what I'm going to do in that silence is pop my sacrificial pact to give me a shield, so I'm not taking any damage basically while I'm in the silence. Remember, sacrificial pact is one of the only defensive abilities that's usable while silence, stunned or anything. And it also has a tiny cooldown, so it should be one of the first defensive abilities that you use, so then you can use it again later on in the fight. I also throw up a Twilight Ward in the middle of the fight, just to absorb even more spell damage. And using these two really short cooldown absorption spells, I'm able to survive through the Mage's counter spell and his Deep Freeze again, and now I'm ready to kill him. Now, while I'm just DPSing this guy down, I know that the Retribution Paladin will want revenge. It's world PvP and... Revenge and ganking and bringing your friends along is what it's all about. So as soon as I turn around and start hitting this guy, I see him battle charging me in the distance. It's very very important to expect them to come back, they always come back. So immediately I'm going to land a pet seduction on him, put up a havoc and greet him with a gigantic chaos bolt. So from here I'm not afraid to throw out them cooldowns, I'm going to put him in a shadow fury stun, keep tunneling out the damage and this is a little trick that you can do. Before the shadow fury ends, Hit your pets to juice again, and almost immediately out of the Shadow Fury, he's going to be in control again, and that's going to let you land a gigantic damage spell like Chaos Bolt. I use the terrain to my advantage here, the natural slope, and I'm going to knock him down into China, and that's going to finally force this guy's bubble. So everything's going good for me now. Um, I see that he's in the bubble. I've got nothing really better to do than just lay a portal and get some distance away from that portal so I can kite him effectively. 
I was basically assuming that the fight was over here and that once I killed this guy they just wouldn't come back. But I do see the res come out on the left of the screen just for a moment, so I immediately go back and try and kill this guy as quickly as possible. It would be kind of bad for me if I was to find myself in a 1vx situation here because I don't have my unending resolve and I don't have my big damage cooldowns. But regardless, this guy goes down and I think that the fight's done with here, so I'm just gonna run off, look for another alliance to kill. But just when I was about to stop recording, I see this rogue come flying out of the sky. So first thing I think, it's a rogue, I need to spread rain of fire, so I do that straight away. Now I want to portal away here, I want to stay on the slope, so if, if the rogue shadow steps to me, I can just knock him straight off again with whiplash. Try and remember to double chaos bolt at every opportunity, even if it's an NPC like in this case. However, the rogue is going to trinket my pet CC and run for his life, so I'm going to chase his ass with my rocket boots. Just like in an arena, it's so so important that you do not let rogues get restealths. Now I just saw the rogue use his cloak of shadows, immediately that sends alarm bells ringing in my head for him to be my kill target. A rogue without cloak of shadows basically has nothing significant to allow him to survive against casters. So he is definitely my target priority right now. Unfortunately I am sitting in this full blind right now and I wouldn't have trinketed that even if I could because that would have meant I would be sitting at a full stun not very long from now. Never ever trinket a blind. Now unfortunately for me, the rogue manages to get a reself and the retribution paladin has come back so I am in hot water right now. Again though, I am up against melees, first thing you do before any fight starts is layer that demonic circle. And it's just as well that I reacted this quickly because as you can see the rogue garrets me almost immediately after laying that circle. So again, while I'm silenced, I'm going to use my sacrificial pact because it's the only defensive cooldown that can really be used while silenced. And right now, I know I've just got to focus on survival. I know the rock has no cloak of shadows. My one-shot macro has just come back off cooldown again, and I know I can kill him if I can just survive. So I land a pet seduce on the paladin to control him. I shot a few east on the rogue, and I'm going to try and land a big chaos bolt on him right now. But for some reason, unbeknownst to me, it crits for barely anything. Now they're both going to connect, so I'm going to pop my big heal uh, cooldowns. I'm going to pop my health stone and my dark regeneration. I'm going to portal away as soon as that Garrett silence is over. And now with the last of my cooldowns, I'm going to be able to instant cast down the rogue while kiting away. Now I'm going to land a pet seduction on this paladin because it's basically all I have. All I have now is my unending resolve and twilight ward, neither of which are even very good defensive cooldowns really against a retribution paladin. None of them reverse the damage that you've taken. I mean, unending resolve is a shield wall, so the more HP you use it on, the better off you are. If you use it on not very much HP, it's not going to actually absorb that much damage overall. But I am basically in the danger zone right now, and I'm going to pop both of these cooldowns anyway, for fear of this Retribution Paladin actually just killing me from range with things like Exorcism, Hammer of Wrath, and Judgment. So you see, I knock him back a little bit, I'm going to land the Shadow Fury, get off some big damage here with this last Chaos Bolt, and at this point, I'm wiping the sweat off my brow right now. I mean, look at the time on my clock. It's like half past three in the morning. I've been PvPing all day, trying to get a really, really good clip for Cobra 16. And I thought that this was it. I was going to log out after this. But I kind of stick around here because in a way, I really, really want the rogue to come back. Because I know that if I can kill him, it'll be like the best clip in the world. But I wouldn't advise this if you were just generally PvPing. I think it's fair to say that you've won the encounter at this point and you have every right to just mount up on your flying mount and fly away proud. But I recklessly stick around I guess, I'm just spamming out the rain of fires and the rogue opens on me with a garret. Now what did I do to the retribution paladin earlier when I had no cooldowns? I used control, I pet seduced him. So what I'm going to do here is use every last control I have in the book. I'm going to use my nets, I'm going to use my pet seduce. I'm even going to use my Infernal Stun and my Whiplash. I use every last trick in the bag possible to control this rogue while I desperately wait for a Sacrificial Pact cooldown to come back up. Because remember, it's a really short cooldown, it's only one minute. I know if I can survive until it comes back off cooldown, I might, might just be okay. Thankfully, I land my pet CC and the Sacrificial Pact actually comes off cooldown just as a bleed tick was about to finish me off. But like I say, it's a very very short cooldown, so don't be afraid to use it as the first defensive cooldown of any PvP encounter, because it will be back off again before you know it. I'm going to immediately net this rogue straight into an infernal stone, and right now my focus is generating up a burning ember. I can see the rogue still has his cheap death debuff, so I know he will just die if he drops to that HP. 
I know that if I can get off one Ember Tap, then it's a win. As you can see, the Rogue Smoke Bomb's here, but don't forget, you can use your Area of Effect attacks in the Smoke Bomb. I then Ember Tap heal, and I'm able to finish him off by just keeping my distance. By this point, I think I had Adrenaline basically blinding me, and it was indeed a very, very intense clip, but there you go, guys, that's the full uncut clip that appeared in Korak 16. With some commentary over it, I hope that it gives you some general pointers on how to take on multiple opponents as a Warlock. Remember to CC, especially if you're out of cooldowns. Pay attention to what cooldowns your enemies have used, like when that rogue had used Cloak of Shadows, it was so obvious to me that I needed to take him down as quickly as possible because he was vulnerable. Sacrificial Pact when you're stunned or silenced. And also track your enemy's interrupts. I'm going to list a couple of add-ons, one's interrupt bar and one is vile cooldowns in the description below. I'd highly advise vile cooldowns. It's an amazing add-on that I've been using for quite some time now and it lets you track interrupts and major defensive cooldowns over the nameplates of your opponents. And that's going to really help you a lot in 1vx situations as well as arenas and all kinds of pvp. So anyways, thanks for watching guys, I really really hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned a thing or two. I'm going to be doing more similar videos like this in the future, so do stay tuned. But until then, have a good day everyone, and stay destro.